My name's Dasset, um, and welcome to not all microservices frameworks are made the same. I'm a consultant working for Telstra Purple, and as a consultant, I help development teams going through this uh, phases of distributed systems and building them. I've worked with teams going through monolith to microservices transition and wanted to share some of my learnings uh, that I've gathered through the my journeys and I've got plenty of scars, so I'm not afraid to talk about them. So for today's discussion, I want to frame our discussion around domain-driven design. The key takeaways from this book by Rick Evans uh, called uh, Tackling Complexity in the Heart of Software is that the real complexity in building software is understanding the business requirements properly. And I really agree with that uh, idea. Uh, don't spend too much time on engineering system and shoehorn business problems inside of it. Pick the right amount of complexity required for the problem. It's better to keep it simple with a path to refactor later than to over-engineer now. So with this knowledge or this overarching theme, let's uh, carry forward to our discussion today. So frameworks. Uh, frameworks can mean many things to different people. Uh, so let's set the context properly. I did a GitHub search for repositories with the keywords microservices, frameworks, and libraries. And sure enough, there's a few things that came up. And frameworks, libraries, or reference application can, applications can all look very familiar or very similar. What I consider frameworks in this context are all-in-one solutions that solve a broad set of problems using a pre-prescribed pattern. Uh, libraries, on the other hand, only solve a specific tiny, small problem with a, a very, I guess, narrow scope versus reference applications, which are just code examples of how to structure your design. Um, so how do you determine what is a framework and what is a library? The simpler answer for this is with frameworks, the frameworks call your code. With libraries, your code calls a library. Frameworks try to frame high-level problems and provide developers with the ability to customize a solution within a scope it defines. Think how a food processor in your kitchen works. It's an all-in-one solution to many things. Libraries, on the other hand, solve a very technical, uh, small problem with no emphasis on what happens outside of it. You can chain multiple libraries to solve a business workflow in your application. Compared to our food processing example before, libraries can be thought of as uh, different types of knives, a grater, and a peeler that you use together to prepare food. Many lightweight tools, in my opinion, are generally better than one heavyweight tool. I'm sure many people agree with that as well. Um, so in my experience, there are two parts that lead us to these frameworks inside uh, quotations. Both are a result of teams over engineering based on speculation and both result in accidental complexity. This is because big design upfront is based on assumptions which turn out to be false later. And as we learn more about the domain, the, this rigidness doesn't allow us to evolve in a graceful way. And the first way uh, we come end up with frameworks is this reinventing everything problem. This often happens in over-eager development teams try to abstract business problems too early. We end up creating frameworks based on false assumptions. Then when the domain understanding eventually evolves, we bend and twist our business problem to work with the framework we created before. The second way is using a sledgehammer approach. Uh, this is a more common thing I see with teams new to uh, building microservices or distributed systems is they uh, use a ready-made framework that solves many problems, but invite over complexity to your solution very early. This is similar to putting a V8 engine in your loan more. You can do it and it might work, but you will end up spending more time maintaining the engine than you actually cut grass. Um, so bike shedding frameworks uh, make us spend too much time thinking about abstractions to build our solutions on top of. 
So go back to domain-driven design and uh, the famous saying that you should focus on the business requirements. Frameworks take our focus away from solving the domain problems because just like the V8 engine, we focus on that. Scope for creativity. Frameworks prescribe a solution for a set of abstract problems. This limits the capacity of your developers to solve problems in creative ways. Um, as a result, what you end up with is these cookie cutter solutions that are not the most efficient nor precise for your problem. Frameworks uh, only target maybe one or two languages at most if you're lucky. This means your development team can only use these particular languages to build your microservices with that particular framework. For a dynamic, evolving polyglot team, this can be very limiting and can slow your team down. Microservices, in my opinion, are about agility and the choice of the right tool for the job. Frameworks definitely don't allow you to do that. The other problem with frameworks is they have a plethora of components that you will probably not need. Using a poorly composed framework, which unfortunately most of them are, can cause large dependencies. And why are these dependencies bad? Because these dependencies are often larger than your own solution, being a microservice, which result in slow startup times and build times. Even if you write your own framework, uh, or this is true because it forces you to share code between your microservices. And the consensus in our community is that sharing code between microservices is generally bad. Frameworks are also designed to be all-in-one solutions to everything. Think our food process an example before. They are not extensible because they aren't built to be extensible. You have to show on your solutions inside of its opinions. It's the framework's way or the highway. Framework components are often tightly coupled and engineered to be used together and not by themselves. So as a result, frameworks don't play with other frameworks and you are pretty much tied to that particular choice you make early in your software design. So some of the famous industry voices have chimed in many times about the use of frameworks. Uh, I've found these Twitter messages recently and uh, the consensus seemed to be that the frameworks provide diminishing returns as the solution grows. A simple to understand system, on the other hand, ages very well compared to all engineered one with a framework. Right, so let's take stock. Uh, what does this mean for teams building distributed systems and microservices? After all, this, the topic of this talk was uh, distributed systems and microservices related to frameworks. Solving network layer problems of a distributed system requires expert level knowledge. It's easy to make false assumptions about the network, um, especially about the network layer and the distributed system. This is an area where you definitely don't want to reinvent the wheel. Um, but you don't need to rely on a framework for this either. So what's the solution? Use a runtime or a platform that doesn't prescribe how you solve a business problem. This gives you the ability to use any, any language, tooling, and still leverage your platform underneath to solve the distributed system complexities. So what do I mean by this? Let's uh, look at a few examples, but before going there, let's compare a platform and runtime to a framework. Because they're saying frameworks are bad and platforms or runtime should be embraced and they're good. How do you differentiate between them? So because some frameworks sell themselves as runtimes or platforms, it can be very confusing, but use this litmus test. Uh, frameworks are prescriptive about how you solve a particular problem. It can affect how you express a domain problems. Runtimes are, on the other hand, are agnostic about your programming language concepts. So you can layer your own concepts and build in blocks on top of it. Like we discussed before, frameworks provide us with all-in-one solutions. And most frameworks have this magic that only works correctly if you use every component the framework provides. No piecemeal approach at this. Runtimes, on the other hand, are mostly invisible to the domain and don't require total buying from you as a developer. You can pick and choose which components you use. This allows you to express your creative freedom 
as a developer and still leverage the advanced features of the runtime that's underneath. Um, and as your solution eventually grows and evolves, hopefully, <laughs> the advantage you get from the boilerplate provided by the framework gives you diminishing returns. We touched on this before and often slows you down. With runtimes, they don't interfere with how you express intent. Solving domain problems or uh, the code doesn't become unnecessarily complex as a result. When using a runtime, the distributed system complexity, you know, things like uh, availability, uh, what happens when a downstream service goes down, uh, uh, circuit breaker, these things are decoupled from your core logic. You can subsequently upgrade and maintain the runtime separately. So think about a solution that's aging where you can still upgrade the runtime or platform underneath. This allows, uh, improves overall maintainability of your software solution. So what's an example of my definition of runtime? Um, distributed application runtime or DEPA is one. It's an open source event-driven portable runtime for building microservices or cloud edge. It's not production ready yet, but it's gonna be very soon. So it's a good time to skill up on it because it's got more momentum than Kubernetes and Knative did at the start. The, Elevator picture is it's got full support for running on top of Kubernetes in a self-hosted manner or in a self-hosted manner, can run in any cloud or any vendor. It has a rich set of building blocks, which I'll touch on, and you can choose these building blocks to develop your microservices on top of. So this is the overview of the Dapper runtime. You can see it can run on any cloud or infrastructure. You've got those building blocks which are then exposed through HTTP or gRPC API. And you can use any language because even if a language were to be invented today, as long as it can talk HTTP or gRPC, these building blocks are exposed to it. So what are these building blocks? So think of these as features, small features you can use to build your microservice on top of. Things like service to service invocation. So this is one microservice talking to another. State management, this is key value pair. You can save and retrieve stuff, actors, pub sub, et cetera. Um, these building blocks have a construct called a component. And uh, these components are an internal abstraction for which there can be multiple pluggable implementations. And I'll show you why that's important in a couple of slides time. Just know that a building block can have many components, for example, the actor model building block has the state component and the pub sub component. So these are the other components that can potentially make up a building block. And the reason why it's, <clears throat> sorry, I said that they are pluggable is because during the deployment time, you can say, okay, for my pub sub component, I want to use RabbitMQ when I'm developing locally, but in production, I want to use Redis Stream, so Azure Service Bus. You can totally do this just by a configuration with minimal code changes. So it's very powerful and doesn't require these concerns to be leaking into your domain layer or any of your core functions. Example of a platform on the other hand for me is Knative. Um, Knative is a example of a hosting platform that runs on Kubernetes. It takes your existing container workload. So if you've got a team that producing containers, it allows you to run them on top of it without having to worry about the infrastructure concerns. It extends Kubernetes through a set of middleware components. And true to my definition of what a platform or runtime should be, it allows you to pick and choose components. Your containers don't need to know anything about the platform. Uh, the part we're interested about is this. Knative provides an API which developers can use to deploy their container workloads. It's got two main components, uh, serving and eventing. Serving takes care of details of things like networking, order scaling, and revision tracking, eventing for universal subscription delivery and management of events. You just have to focus on the core logic and let the platform handle the difficult and boring network engineering problems. This is the cell uh, to a developer. So what are the conclusions? We touched on a few things today. Uh, the key takeaways for me is simple solutions are easy to maintain and make sense of. Composable designs allow us to pick the right tool for the job. 
stand on the shoulders of giants and leverage your runtimes and platforms from the industry giants so you don't have to solve distributed system complexities. So what this means is frameworks uh, don't allow us to keep the solution simple as the solution grows, nor make it a composable one. But it doesn't mean you have to solve the problems of the network layer. Try to leverage something like Dapo, Knative, and there's a plethora of options there if you do your research. But think of utilizing a runtime or platform for your distributed system because it's a hard problem to solve. And also use an appropriate level of engineering for the problem. Think about the people, the poor people who have to maintain what you build in five years' time. Um, there's no perfect way to build a system. Hindsight will always make you look stupid. So set yourself up to correct your mistakes in the least obstructive way. Using a framework makes it harder to recover from your mistakes as the knowledge of the domain grows and the business requirements evolve. And that's why you shouldn't use a framework. Friends don't let other friends use microservices frameworks. Thank you. I'll, uh, like the other speakers before, I've uh, got the Azure Swag giveaway as well. I'll use a different approach and uh, share my code on my Twitter with the slide deck in a few minutes. Thank you.